Good day everyone, Dr. Polaris here. In this episode, we will be turning our attention back to the Congo and the prehistoric cryptids said to dwell there. And I won't simply be covering one cryptid, but a pair of them, the spiky-backed Nguma Manini and the Umbilu Umbilu Umbilu. As there is not much credible information out there about these mystery animals, I thought that it would be a good idea to combine them into one video. After all, their descriptions are remarkably similar, and reports of both are clearly describing the same kind of animal, namely an oversized lizard with a ridge of spines along its back. However, as with all of the Congo cryptids that we've looked at so far, early reports describe an unknown form of living animal, while over time this gradually evolves into the idea of living dinosaurs. The reasons for this transition have a rather simple explanation, Roy Mackel. <coughs> so let's now have a look at the individual descriptions of these animals. The Nguma Manini, meaning large python, is often said to be a long-bodied, lizard-like beast with a row of spikes along its spine. At least, this is how the creature is described in all published sightings. I say this because cryptozoologists appear to be desperate for this thing to be some sort of living dinosaur even though all descriptions of the Unguma Manini sound absolutely nothing like any type of dinosaur whatsoever. This is why, when you look up this cryptid online, you will see numerous drawings and entries on cryptozoology wikis that describe the Unguma Manini as a spinosaurid, or, even more outlandishly, as a living species of the synapsid Dimetrodon. Of course, both of these explanations are preposterous, given that Spinosaurs died out during the late Cretaceous, and Dimetrodon last lived on this Earth during the Permian 272 million years ago. Of course, as we have seen, scientific evidence is not that important to the true believers, both fundamentalist Christian or otherwise. It has also been proposed that the Unguma Manini is a living Dolciosaurid, marine reptiles from the Cretaceous with serpentine bodies and reduced limbs. But again, there is no evidence for these animals surviving into modern times at all. As regards the Umbilu, this reptilian cryptid is overall similar to the aforementioned Unguma Manini. However, it is said to have a taller row of plates running along its back, and a short, squat body similar to that of a hippo. This description is reflected in its name, meaning the animal with planks growing out of its back. It is said to be herbivorous, unlike the Unguma Manini, and spends almost all of its time half submerged in the water. Given this information, cryptozoologists have suggested that the Umbilu is a living stegosaur of some kind. However, this is an untenable idea, as stegosaurs died out by the early Cretaceous period, long before the mass extinction at the end of the Cretaceous 65 million years ago. Taking into account all of these outlandish claims, what do the actual sightings themselves really describe? <laughs> but this is not an easy task, as both creatures are said to go by many different native names in the Congolese Lingala language. While in modern times they are known as the Unguma Manini and the Umbilu, in most of the early 20th century accounts linked to these mystery animals, they are variously called the Diba, Songo, Ura Mgu, and the Badigui. The first time that reported sightings made it into print was in the 1958 book On the Track of Unknown Animals by famous Belgian cryptozoologist Bernard Hoovermans. In this book, Hoovermans recounts a sighting made in 1928 of a giant, long-bodied, snake-like creature in the Umbangishari area of the Congo. This report was made by game inspector Lucien Blanco, who, as you may remember, later in 1954 also made the first report of the Emela and Tuka. According to this account, it killed a hippo in the Branchuru River without leaving any sign of a wound. It also crushed a manioc field, causing tracks that were 1 to 1.5 metres wide. Similar reports from 1932 and 1934 exist. In the 1934 report, an old man had especially come to see Blanco as he was told that he showed interest in the animal. The old man narrated that in about 1890, he was fishing in the Kibi stream and saw the Badigui eating from a tree. 
He described the neck as to be as thick as a man's thigh, and the underneath of the neck was lightly coloured. He could not see the full body, only about 8 metres of the neck. He also said, it does not frequent places where you find hippos, for it kills them. Finally, in 1945, the animal's tracks were spotted near Ndele by one of Blanco's gun carriers. All of these reports are very hazy in nature, and don't give a good insight into what sorts of animals these might be. However, for the Unguma Manini at least, there are two later sightings that do go into a little bit more detail. The first of these took place in 1961, and centred on the Motaba River in eastern Cameroon. The eldest sister of Cameroon's first secretary of the General Assembly, Michel Zabatu, was swimming in the river when she saw a snake-like head and neck emerge from the water about 50 feet away. Local villagers came over when she cried out for help, and they all observed the animal swimming upriver. It apparently flicked its forked tongue in and out as it moved away upstream. The second sighting took place in the exact same area of the Mataba River and was made in 1971 by Pastor Joseph Ellis. While sailing down the river in a dugout canoe, Ellis glimpsed the tail of a large reptilian animal disappearing into the foliage at the riverside. The pastor never managed to get a good look at the creature's head as he was more than 200 feet away, but he stated that the animal's tail alone was roughly 30 feet long. The body was long and slender, with a width of about two feet, and walked with its belly just above the ground. Its scaly skin was a greyish-brown colour, and when Ellis returned to his camp at the nearby village, none of the locals would talk to him about the creature. From these reports, we can see that the Unguma Manini is clearly supposed to be some sort of huge, long-bodied lizard. Unbelievable as this may seem, this was Roy Mackle's rather realistic interpretation of the creature, put forward in his 1987 book, A Living Dinosaur. This remains the most plausible of all suggestions concerning the identity of this cryptid, although I don't know why the Inguma Manini could not be just a case of mistaken identity. Perhaps a crocodile seen from an odd angle, or a large monitor lizard, maybe. One thing is for certain, though, this cryptid can in no way be suggested to be a living Spinosaurid or Dimetrodon if we actually follow what is reported in these sightings. But what can I say, cryptozoologists just can't seem to resist the idea of living dinosaurs in the Congo, no matter how absurd, outdated and vaguely racist this notion may be. As for the Umbilu, there are no reported sightings at all, only the testimony of Congolese natives. Unsurprisingly, the only time that this cryptid was mentioned in the literature was in Roy Mackle's A Living Dinosaur. During his hunt for the Mokele and Bembe, Mackle recorded his interactions with the locals and the tales that they told. One of these concerned the Umbilu, a large stocky creature that lived in the neighbouring swamps. Most sightings have only been reported by locals at the villages of Banila and Ebolo, claiming that the creature has green algae on the exposed part of its body when coming up to the surface of the water. They failed to give an accurate description of the feet of the Umbilu, saying that the creature was sighted when submerged in the water. Again, Mackel identifies this animal as being one and the same as the Unguma manini, stating that both are likely large monitor lizards. This is amusing, as all the later cryptozoology enthusiasts online have clearly drawn on Mackel's own idea of living dinosaurs in the Congo to paint these cryptids as prehistoric survivors. So, in a roundabout way, Mackel is also responsible for this dinosaurification process. Honestly, I'm a little sick of this meme and enjoy more plausible explanations, such as Darren Nash and John Conway's fun speculation that the Umbilu is actually a giant biker fish makes a lot more sense than a living stegosaur in my opinion. Thanks for watching everyone. I just want to give a shout out to my latest subscribers. The channel now has over 50 of you, for which I am ever so thankful. Once I reach 100 subscribers, I will be starting a new video series on some of the world's most mysterious and poorly understood real animals that the most of the general public will never have heard of. Once again, thank you and I'll see you again soon. Cheerio.